all of you and uh, this meeting has been taken uh, up uh, for this meeting particularly dr manish raj dr siddharth dr sushil jaiswal dr kalash kothari dr tan shekhar they have done a wonderful and amazing job uh, and i hope that it will be useful for all of us thank you once again so i hand over uh, the things to dr manish and dr siddharth to take this meeting forward yeah dr anurag it is dr kalash kothari sorry yes, i joined little late Yes, 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 yes. I cannot see you. Okay. Uh, and I, I, from my side, I welcome Dr. Kim. Dr. Kim, hi. How are you? I, I nice to meet you. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I welcome you, and uh, I wish uh, audience today have a very good time listening to you. And uh, we have great opening uh, of this uh, society. of endoscopic spine and the interventional pain society and we wish that uh, under your guidance and your uh, with your friendship we will uh, do lot of new things in india welcome to india yeah thank you so much words virtually only we will have you in the physical form also one day dr uh, santosh tripathi also would like to welcome you santosh sir please say few words to your uh, Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yeah. Good evening, Dr. Kim, and uh, it's uh, we are very privileged to have you here. We are very honored and privileged to have you here for this uh, webinar, and we welcome you uh, for this. And uh, and uh, as far as the topic is concerned, the topics are the basic uh, endoscopic uh, techniques, and we will take the questions uh, and the, after the presentations, and we will answer the um, uh, direct the questions to you after the seminar after the webinar. I think audience can uh, put their question in chat in the chat box. box. Chat room, yeah. So, yeah. Siddharth, uh, sir, please, please, uh, st please start. Uh, we are eager to listen to you and uh, learn from you. Doctor Kim, you can start your share now. Yes. yes. Can I start now? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now. Yes, sir. Can you see? Yes, we can see your yeah. screen. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you so much for introducing me, uh, Dr. Uh, Anulak Agarwal, and uh, yes, it is my great pleasure to give a lecture in uh, ESIPS uh, to give a lecture of the endoscopic uh, spinal treatment. And uh, thanks for introducing me, uh, Dr. Menshin Laj, and uh, my friend of the San uh, Sanjay Sharma and San uh, Santosh Trifet, and uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Anulag Agar, thank you so much for uh, inviting me. Uh, uh, I uh, requested two uh, lectures from Dr. Mensh Raj. Uh, first, uh, today we'll give the lecture of the uh, basic course of the uh, lumbar dissectomy. And uh, two weeks later, I will give the, some another lecture of the sp endoscopic spinal treatment. Today, we will discuss about the transfrominal and intraminal lumbar dissectomy using the endoscopic uh, spinal endoscope. This is my curriculum by ten disclosure. Yes, uh, this image is taken from the last year, uh, uh, last meeting. Uh, I'm a, a co uh, director of the, this uh, pre congress, Kadaba uh, Okisha. And so many uh, doctors attend to here, and they very interested in the endoscopic uh, spinal uh, treatment. It's meaning that uh, maybe. The future of the spinal treatment will be uh, changed by the endoscopic alley. And the history of the endoscopic spine surgery we can classify the four generation. First generation from, uh, from uh, Tony Young is a uh, endoscopic uh, transfrominal lumbar disectomy. And second generation is a endoscopic intraminal uh, lumbar disectomy. And uh, third generation is endoscopic decompression, and uh, now generation, fourth generation is endoscopic lumbar intervallic fusion. But we can here, can classify the two generation. One generation is the disectomy generation, and one another generation is the decompression and fusion generation. 
But uh, 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 this time, uh, our topic uh, classified by the basic and uh, uh, advanced, but I think that maybe the Lumba dissect, endoscope Lumba dissectomy is not basic. That also needs some learning curve and uh, after uh, expert uh, expert the learning curve, the the time can move the decompression and fusion surgery can possible by the endoscopically. Anyway, today we will discuss about the uh, uh, endoscopic transpraminal and intraminal vasectomy. Uh, this is my paper published in uh, 2018 by Pain Pishan. That time. Um, uh, actually, uh, I did not uh, perform the open surgery for the lumbar disc herniation maybe before five years. Uh, I have no cases uh, of the open surgery. Yeah, the patient come to with the degenerative uh, lumbar disc herniation. And, and I studied how much can take uh, the clinical result for the all lumbar disc herniation treated by the endoscopically. In my clinical result, we can see the 96% uh, of patients can take a good to excellent, excellent re result. This result meaning that uh, not uh, uh, in, uh, indicated case for all lumbar uh, disc herniation patients. It means that uh, uh, then maybe next uh, time we can uh, 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 move the uh, standard operation from the uh, open surgery to endoscopically uh, by the, the this study. And also uh, this year, uh, Dr. Chen published the paper of the uh, uh, two Eurospinal journal uh, uh, for the complication rate of different disectomy technique for uh, symptomatic uh, lumbar disc herniation, and they concluded that. Uh, the uh, compare with uh, open disectomy or microsectomy result of this meta analysis suggests that the uh, PLD has a low risk of overall complication and a low risk of complication necessary conservative treatment. It's meaning that uh, uh, for uh, lead this paper, Dr. Uh, Jin Sung Kim, uh, Jin Sung Lok Kim talking on the Facebook. Uh, he talked that uh, finally we are facing the change of gold standard for this condition from transformer endoscopy has been superior to open microsectomy. And he very happy to uh, 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 meet, meet this situation because we, uh, Jin Sang Kim and me, we, we wait so long time to uh, for this time, maybe more near 20, 20 years we waiting for this uh, this uh, time. Anyway, it's mean, meaning that uh, nowadays the uh, uh, the uh, gold standard will be the lumbar disc herniation will be endoscopic uh, treatment, and also this data is my data for uh, uh, preparing the paper for neurology India and. Uh, this paper already accepted from Neurology India. And uh, I searched my cases of uh, uh, classified the three generation. First generation is a disectum generation. Second generation is a decompression generation here. And third generation is with the addition of the fusion generation. Uh, in my clinical result, uh, 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 this case is more than 600 cases divided uh, three generation. In that uh, clinical research, maybe with the expansion of the endoscopic uh, spinal surgery for the not only the lumbar to the uh, cervical to thoracic and decompression and fusion surgery, then finally we can take uh, more than 98% of uh, uh, degenerative spinal disease can treated by the endoscopically, not uh, by the open surgery. It's meaning that the uh, in the future of the spinal treatment will be uh, changed to uh, paradigm will be shifting to the endoscopically, maybe with the, some uh, learning and some teaching and education. Because of that, this is very important. Uh, like the, uh, this uh, making society is very important. ESIPS is, I think that maybe this will be the 
leading society of the uh, for the uh, next generation. And then now we will discuss about the endoscopic lumbar disectomy. Firstly, uh, any any kind of treatment, any kind of uh, method, we first we should checking the what is the rationale for this treatment, and uh, we should checking the rationale of the endoscopic lumbar disectomy, uh, endoscopic uh, decompression, endoscopic fusion surgery. Uh, to, uh, to, Antonio always talking that uh, we are minimized the option, we are minimized damage, we are minimized the approach is the transfrontal endoscopic uh, spinal approach. It's meaning that uh, our rationale of the endoscopic uh, 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 spinal surgery is the not only treat to the pathology, but also will give the preserve the structures, all things and uh, Additionally, we should give the more good clinical results and more good life to the patient. That is a real rationale of the uh, our uh, 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 endoscopic uh, approach. Uh, unfortunately, uh, initial time of the endoscopic spinal uh, surgery, uh, they firstly uh, rationally make uh, like uh, some early recovery and early ambulation and less uh, anesthetics. Yes, it's correct. But uh, nowadays there is uh, some uh, old fashion uh, rationally. Maybe, uh, yes, you can see here that this patient can take a uh, uh, severe uh, foramen to superior migration cases and the force operatively it uh, uh, remove the completely and the patient to return to uh, his uh, uh, normal life uh, very rapidly. There is a, uh, it, here we can see the early recovery, early ambulation and less anesthetics. But nowadays the indication and the uh, skill is more advanced compared to the last year. Because of that, uh, nowadays we can treat more difficult cases. For example, this case is, is uh, a revision case, uh, recur the cases after open microsectomy. You can see here the, the microsectomy area and huge severe and huge highly impure migrate cases. In these cases, maybe before time, uh, this is not indication for the endoscopic uh, approach. And also this patient, in spite of the only 30, uh, a seven year male patient, the patient, uh, need the operation and if the patient receiving the op open surgery some of doctors will choose the fusion surgery because of the still have uh, some high chance of recurrence and high chance of instability because of that the if we can doing this patient by the endoscopic endoscopic like this that will be the real uh, our rationale of the endoscopic spine surgery then we can see here the first uh, less damage the anatomical structures and then give, uh, give the more preservation of the functional segment uh, with, uh, and also can give the more good uh, healthy life to the patient. And this patient can see the another cases of the third tier female patient. Also you can see the right side and left side and the ship tier migration and uh, central and the uh, inferior migration or pathology uh, combined here because of that uh, this patient treated uh, by the endoscopically before uh, before time this is not easy and also the patient uh, uh, visit to uh, another clinic maybe the patient uh, I think that the, the patient need uh, some fusion or decompression and more aggressive aggressive surgery but if we can doing the by endoscopically and can disappear this pathology or by the one one step, the patient will be uh, more 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 good chance to return he, her life, and it's mean that the preserve the motion segment is very important to the patient healthy life and uh, health their uh, work life and uh, enjoy the life all things is very important to the patient not only the pain and also this patient also see the some another cases of 20 only 20 year may patient uh, 
with uh, some pending state of new, pending neurologic state. You can see here, so severe uh, stenosis, stenosis with uh, some uh, ankle weakness and some uh, uh, near foot drop state and some, uh, and also the patient some receiving the operation, the patient op uh, open surgery, the patient need uh, some uh, maybe fusion surgery or very uh, aggressive surgery needed for this patient. Also, some another things uh, things that uh, uh, the recovery recovery chances uh, less because of that uh, uh, open surgery need uh, some traction. Very weak uh, neuropathic nerve traction still needed. But if we train, uh, approach from the transpyramna. We cannot uh, retract the weak nerve, and we have a more good chance to uh, restore and return to his uh, uh, neurologic state. Not only neuro pain, uh, but also neurologic state, and can give the his uh, uh, life to normal state. And also, this patient followed more than one year. The patient now uh, lived his normal life. And it's meaning that the, the rationale is that uh, because of that, the preserved the normal neurologic stream is the also very, will be very important point of the endoscope, the rationale of the endoscopic spine treatment. And also this another case is of the 33 year female patient with uh, some stenosis and, and uh, disc pathology in L5S1. Also, you can see here the disc height uh, narrow and some modic change because of that uh, the, the patient also need uh, uh, some indication of the fusion surgery if the patient met some other doctors. But if we can uh, limit the pathology completely and also some uh, like this post-operative and one year follow-up, you can see he here, uh, nerve, uh, nerve compression, decompression, decompression very well, and also the uh, neurological extreme also uh, restored completely. And another functional seg segment also preserved the near completely because of that the patient can pass a, possible to return to his normal, uh, her normal life. This is our uh, very important rational of this uh, three, four or uh, rational less than in the anatomical structures and preserve the motion segment and the preserve the neural stream and the return to normal life is a very important rational for the, of the endoscopic spinal treatment. Yes, uh, now we should, uh, uh, should uh, some checking the historical consideration of the endoscopic uh, lumbar sector because uh, we always checking the history and then we can go uh, the further uh, development. Uh, firstly, uh, we knowing that very well, Kambin's triangle, Parvis Kambin interest in 1986, Kambin's triangle is made by the Ekiking Novot and Trevoshing Novot and the upper end plate of the low vertebral. This is very well known. And actually the first generation of the uh, Endoscopic spine surgery also before time uh, uh, performed some other doctors, but uh, visualized, for, uh, visualized uh, endoscope first introduced by the Tony Young and then uh, so many endoscopic spine doctors believe that uh, this is first starting of the full endoscopic spine surgery. It's the visualized uh, for the intradiscal area. Uh, but uh, uh, Tony Young firstly starting from the inside out technique and uh, now st still uh, he performing the inside out technique. And uh, but uh, inside we uh, knowing that already well known that the uh, inside out technique have uh, some limitation because of that in the some uh, more other, uh, more some different technique like uh, some outside in technique. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Dr. Hoogland already uh, some passed, but anyway, he, he uh, first introduced the uh, outside in technique 2005 and so many, nowadays so many Joymax and so many German doctors and they perform the outside in technique. Firstly, ducking the 
uh, working channel to uh, the foramen and the drill, drilling or reaming to that there, reaming that area and opening the foramen and they remove the pathology from the outside. This is a, a, a second and then uh, 2006, uh, uh, 2006, Dr. Gonche and Dr. Retin, near similar uh, period, they introduced the intraminal tech uh, approach. But uh, this technique, they firstly introduced the L5S1. It's meaning that uh, uh, be, be, uh, firstly, already, already I, I'm talking that the true minimally invasive approach is the transframinal. But L5S1 has uh, some uh, iliac crest and some limitation and fortunately there have some wide intraminal space because of that the uh, intraminal space sometimes the more benefit to the uh, is the segmental artery. Uh, this is my paper published maybe 2009. Uh, this segmental artery injury and huge retroperitoneal hematoma cases. You can see here this uh, segmental artery in my experience. I'm also I have one case, only one case. This case is of the QG uh, retroperitoneal cases, hematoma cases. Maybe I think that maybe I have more uh, transfer approach, more than 2,000 cases. But uh, uh, I met this patient so long time ago, and that time published this paper. And I'm uh, I, that time I'm knowing that the, this segmental artery injury they always came from here. Uh, some doctors talking that here, but in my experience, always here, uh, especially Fraben, extra foramen, and superior myelination cases, more uh, related to this uh, segmental artery injury. Because of that, if you met uh, the, some abundant uh, blood gusha from the uh, transframinal, fresh blood gusha, uh, then you always checking the, this point. Uh, Sub uh, uh, sub ventral area of the, from the dorsal root ganglion. That area always you can you always you can search the bleeding point of the second artery. And uh, um, yes, discuss at the time. Yes, this point is very important anatomy. And also in the transformer approach, we should be checking the this another uh, anatomy also very important. This uh, paper published in World Neurosurgery by me. There you can see here the three different routes. It's mean that uh, we, uh, before time, we perform only transformer inside our technique. That time, intervertebral disc, intervertebral route, always we use this route because of that, uh, some superior migration and inferior migration is, is not easy. But if we uh, use the mobile outside in and outside in approach, and we, uh, we can approach some another migration uh, area, but we should uh, checking these three different routes. Uh, for example, exiting the route uh, located in the foramen route. Foramen route is here. Uh, uh, the uh, pathology related to the parietal disc and foramen disc and superior migration. It's mean that uh, in the foramen route is a completely different route of the intervertebral route. I will show next image. And also, uh, paracentral disc and central disc, inferior migration disc, like this is a, you, you sh we should using the suprapedicular route rather than the intervertebral route. It also some different. Here, it means the intervertebral route and foramenal route and suprapedicular to here. Uh, it's meaning that the, uh, here is the intervertebral route, but uh, sometimes we approach it to here. Here is a, some axilla area and uh, some uh, retraction of the nerve uh, dorsal root ganglion, we can see here the foramenal root here. And also this image is showing the suprapedicular root area. Because of that, uh, if we docking to here, some move, uh, moving of the walking channel to here is not easy because uh, the, this bony, bony obstacle blocking the move, moving walking channel to the uh, uh, target point because of that, uh, we that time we should uh, moving the working channel to the suprapedicular area, then the opening here, then can remove the pathology more easily. 
you can see here this image in intervertebral root. Uh, we always see this image half and half, uh, half and half technique published by Dr. Lee. Half and half meaning that the uh, uh, working channel uh, ducking half to the discal area, half uh, locate uh, to the abdral area. Then uh, in the uh, intervertebral root approach is um, at the initial time, we uh, only indicated some paracentral area, but uh, paracentral disc. But if we have a more expert at that time, we pro, uh, trying the high canal compromised cases and more uh, central huge petrol uh, disc uh, protrusion cases. At that time, uh, some if we not making this half and half, uh, uh, that the uh, that pathology can not easy to remove uh, from the uh, transformer area. But if we making this and can approach to this area by the forcep and the right frequency uh, approach can this actual area, that can remove pathology more easily in spite of the more severe high canal compromise cases. Also in the foramen root is, I, I already mentioned that uh, this is completely different to the root from the transfer intervertebral root. Uh, it also needs uh, some uh, movement, move uh, the working channel to the transfer root. If we move the uh, working channel to, to the foramen root, we can see this image, this axilla area and this pathology point, uh, this group, but it should protect the dorsal root ganglion by the working channel, like this. This is very important. And also in the supra-pedicular root, it also completely different root of the intervertebral root. Uh, near close to the pedicular area and some resection of this point, we can uh, possibly exposure the uh, highly inferior migration paracentral area, then can leave the pathology uh, from the transformer area like uh, this. But in the, uh, yes, uh, before time, mm, so many doctors, uh, Tony and also many doctors talking that the transformer is a real minimized option of the endoscopic spine surgery because of that, uh, should try that L5S1 transformerly. But, in my opinion, I have some different uh, uh, concept. Uh, because of that, uh, if we have a more easy and more easy route and uh, can give the more good result to the patient, why, why intramnase is not uh, tried to the patient? Why not? Why not? But, and also, so uh, yes, in young patient, it, it is possible, but there have some limitation of the pedicle pedicle transverse process. In spite of them, uh, in the patient have uh, some generation, there have some iliac crest blocking here because of that transformer is sometimes very difficult. Because of that, uh, that time we can try the interim approach. Uh, actually, I have all L5S1 cases, I have always interim approach because uh, that very, uh, we I performing some patient only 15 minutes or sometimes 10 minutes uh, can possible to uh, limit the pathology. Anyway, fortunately L5S S1 has uh, some uh, wide in trimer space. But anyway, uh, first time we discussed we talking that uh, we always keep the rational because of that uh, rational our rational is the preserve the structural function and uh, preserve the neural question. Because of that, uh, uh, I recommend uh, to them splitting the ligament problem and sealing the annulus for the L5S in spite of the we perform the L5S and disectomy internally. And then here, there have uh, three important anatomical structures. So, for interim approach here. One first met uh, uh, anatomical structures is a ligament problem. Second thing is a nerve. Third thing is of the disc pathology. Uh, our goal is uh, uh, some reading of this pathology without damage to these structures because of that uh, uh, 
uh, we should release this point with the uh, structural preservation, pre structural preservation uh, limber of this pathology. For, uh, for example, like this splitting of the ligament problem and then pass to here and the uh, liver of this pathology and then annular ceiling here. Yes, uh, uh, Menshi, can I yes, have so a 10 minute discussion? Yes, time? Dr. Kim. Yeah. Hello, this is Dr. Kotari. Yeah, so nice presentation on uh, anatomical consideration. Now we have a few questions from our audience and uh, we are full now and uh, we have we are also live on Facebook and we are also live on uh, orthotv.com. So we have many, many audience and there are, there are a lot of questions. So we'll take a few questions. Uh, so the first question is uh, in anatomy, we have heard about furcal nerves. What is the importance of furcal nerves? in foramen and uh, uh, how do you identify and prevent the injury to focal nerve? Uh, yes, uh, focal nerve always uh, talking from the tonia, but uh, uh, I think some differently because of that I'm, uh, I have uh, uh, so many experience of transformer uh, uh, approach, but uh, 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 in my experience, focal nerve is not important, important to approach there. Rather than the, I saw the so many uh, nerve is the uh, medial branch rather than the focal nerve because of that. Uh, I I'm not uh, I I I'm I do not hope to read, uh, comment for the focal nerve because of the. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I think so you don't worry much about <laughs> focal nerve. It is what? overrated. Do you think it is overrated? Injury to focal nerve is overrated. <laughs> no comment, please. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. So you don't worry about focal nerves. You can go safely without yes. uh, worrying about focal nerves. Okay. The second question is: uh, uh, any any the, uh, uh, outside in and inside out. These two techniques are uh, uh, many times people are following. So do which is. Uh, Better technique? Uh, is it one technique which is causing more uh, injury to the disc than other? Yes, yes, that is a good question. Uh, yes, injury to the uh, disc uh, more danger inside out. But uh, we should checking the for beginner. Always beginner is not expert, and the tool learning the endoscopic uh, transplant approach uh, in my experience more than either more than fifty cases because of that. Uh, inside out should firstly try for a uh, beginner because that is more easy. I okay. recommend to the uh, my followers uh, for the initial time you starting the inside out but after learn the uh, you become a some master you should move to the outside in and uh, and also some uh, leaving uh, so aggressive leaving uh, I don't agree. Because uh, okay. I choose the some mobile outside in, okay. Okay, fine. So we take your okay. point of view. And the other question is uh, uh, when we enter, many times we find the facet uh, it being hypertrophied and it is quite big. Uh, Sometimes it is normal. So the question is, do you uh, do the rimming of the facet in every case or only in cases where it is hypertrophy or it is obstructing your entry? Yes, that is a good question. Uh, before operation, you checking the XR MRI. There have uh, some wide frame, and usually uh, not hypertrophic to the patients. The approach is more easy. But if uh, the frame is wide, uh, narrow, there is a, you should checking the uh, frame uh, uh, narrowing. And also, usually above the L45, L34, L23. Uh, usually have a wide frame because approach is usually not that difficult. Right. And also, some another point is that uh, firstly, ducking. I already mentioned the uh, working channel ducking to the deepest point. But if you ducking to the deepest point, some angle is very steep. It's meaning that uh, 
already hypertrophied uh, uh, frame. But you can docking to the deep uh, Cambrian triangle can pass up to lowering the working channel. There is a wide frame. That being the wide frame. Today, mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. I, I'm also performing the uh, all the uh, disc pathology patient transforming. Firstly, docking the working channel maybe 45 degree. That mean uh, it means that uh, they are very uh, uh, hypertrophic for a uh, foreman, then uh, I recommend to the nurse, you, we should uh, prepare in the drill. And uh, uh, I'm drilling, not decided before operation. During, after oper uh, during operation, I'm decided using the drill or not. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. And uh, the next question is, uh, you mentioned about uh, doing radio frequency ablation. Uh, so what are the, structures uh, you uh, you uh, apply radio frequency to uh, during only annulus or there are some other uh, structures hmm. like some other nerves you also do rf ablation during yes uh, yes uh, uh, you uh, i uh, recently i published uh, that, that paper international journal of molecular science uh, they are very strong impact uh, uh, journal uh, there uh, we, uh, I already mentioned that the cyanovertebral lobe and neuro, uh, uh, vegetable lobe came from related to the dorsal ganglion. Vegetable lobe passed to the vertebral body, especially around the pedicure area. Vegetable neuropathy usually happen here, and so many vegetable uh, neuropathy patient have a, uh, uh, so a, a nerve nerve vascular. Uh, neurovascularization to there and severe adhesion to there and severe twitching there because of that uh, not uh, discarry area. Not, uh, some patient need uh, some dis uh, sign, uh, mm -hmm. sign of a neuropathy patient need uh, some discar radio frequency but usually uh, uh, around the pedicle uh, uh, vertebral area uh, radio frequency ablation can give the neuropathic treatment uh, of the vegetable lobe, neuropathy. Okay, uh, fine, thank you. The next question is about the arterial injury. Have you encountered uh, arterial injury and under uh, when you're performing uh, this procedure, how do you control the bleeding once? What are the uh, techniques by which you can prevent or and also to manage the arterial injury, yeah. especially thank radicular you. artery? That was a good question. Uh, actually, that question is a next, that I will give us some next. <laughs> Uh, lecture. Next session. Anyway, okay. Uh, uh, no, no, no. I will answer. Um, okay. Actually, segmental. Firstly, we should check uh, detection of the segmental artery injury. Uh, mm -hmm. Very fresh uh, blood gush out during the operation. That usually mean uh, sometimes meaning the uh, segmental artery injury, but um, some dark blood gush out uh, in spite of the uh, uh, massive gush out. Uh, dark gush out usually not meaning the second arterial injury. And that is first oh, okay. point. Second point is that uh, after leaving the working channel, some weight, because of the skin is very small and there was some weighting. If they gush out uh, some blood uh, uh, from the uh, skin chain area, that meaning the arterial injury, usually Venous bleeding blocking by the only skin uh, muscle uh, closure. Because of that, uh, if you met uh, some blood gush, gush out after, uh, machine blood gush out after leaving the working channel, you should uh, insert the working channel to there. And then mm -hmm. I already mentioned that uh, you, we, you should insert the, firstly, checking the, uh, under the dorsal root ganglion, that, Area is a segmental artery. Uh, I'm already. I'm also still met uh, some of patients segmental artery. Uh, uh, so serious uh, massive gush out, uh, blood gush out. That time I'm insert to the working channel to the under the uh, dorsal ganglion and protect the nerve and uh, some detraction. Then blood some uh, uh, decreasing. That time a radio frequency ablation of the um, segmental artery that can control the bleeding. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. We have a lot of questions coming. We are flooding with questions, mm -hmm. but we have a restriction of time. 
so i think we will move to the next session and then uh, in next session we'll take some questions okay uh, yeah. i will go to the next session yes yes now uh, then now we will discuss about the surgical consideration of the endoscopic uh, lumbar discectomy first we checking the some anesthesia yes uh, before time so many doctors uh, try uh, um, try and believe that the local anesthetics is best for the uh, transform approach yes it's a best if the patient uh, satisfy and it, if the patient is stable, that is best. But uh, nowadays, so all the patient and uh, in spite of some younger patient, some, uh, so many patients now, now there's some nervous state because of that uh, during the operation, we can uh, matter so uh, huge uh, blood pressure increase, high blood pressure increase and some of some uh, nervous state uh, during after uh, local anesthetics because of that uh, nowadays especially some oh, 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 sorry uh, some female patients or uh, sometimes very nervous and because of nowadays i performing the uh, abdural anesthesia in spite of the transfer from an approach but uh, because of that the transfer approach uh, 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 near close to the dorsal ganglion. If we, uh, I re I recommend if you hope to after anesthesia, you starting after uh, uh, you become an expert. Uh, not uh, not starting from initial. In spite of the, the patient complained the severe pain during the pressure initial time and the beginning time beginner, I recommend the local anesthetics. But uh, if we have uh, some expert, you can uh, guarantee your patient of the nerve damage, then you can try the after anesthesia and the patient more comfortable. Uh, 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 Dr. Wetten is very well known doctors. Uh, I'm visiting to her, him maybe 2005. His surgery or all surgery is general, do you know? It's meaning that uh, there is, uh, he guaranteed the patient's uh, nervous safety and uh, there's more comfortable to the patient. And uh, I already mentioned that uh, in the end, uh, transforamna, in spite of the intramna, they are have a, uh, most obstacle came from the bony structures so like the transforamna critical process and passe. But uh, nowadays, there is not obstacle because we can drill all points here by the drill, by the rima, and also can uh, approach more deepest point with the uh, more wide uh, uh, opening uh, of the operation field without them the functional segment like a facet and some other structures. And also some another point of that uh, entry point is very important because of that uh, there is uh, some visceral organ near close to there and also we hope to uh approach that kingdom more lessened uh, anger because of that this uh, uh entry point is very important uh, this is a co conventional well known uh, indicator of the uh, approach point four five or twelve centimeter Three, four, ten centimeter, uh, two, three, eight centimeter, one, two, six centimeter. But uh, this is, uh, or uh, because of the patient, some patient very lean, some patient very fat, and some patient very tall, and some patient all different because of that. This is not in some patient is uh, incorrect because of that. Uh, uh, that uh, original hospital introducing this technique before operation. Uh, uh, attach the metal to there and checking the MRI and they checking the uh, ent uh, entry point. But this also can some change because of the MRI taken by the lying down operation is a prone position because of that it also will change because of uh, I'm using this uh, technique. This this is my technique. My fellows all all uh, follow the this this technique. Firstly. Uh, drawing the midline and checking the back muscle area, checking the abdominal muscle area, 
uh, during the boundary. And here is the ilia crest. Then here is the safety point. Here you can see here. Drawing, drawing the ilia crest here. Back muscle and abdominal muscle here. Yes. Then we can drawing the entry point here. Like this, uh, uh, checking the back muscle point and checking the uh, abdominal muscle point. Actually, back muscle point is more stiff. Abdominal muscle point is uh, very soft. The boundary is the uh, boundary is here, and the, it's a uh, uh, can drawing from the lateral margin of the iliac crest to oblique line. It's a uh, uh, boundary of this back muscle and abdominal muscle and uh, medial board, medial line, medial point is the safety point of the entry. And also, this is already well known uh, uh, imagination. Uh, most safety needling docking point is the uh, most lower and most dorsal point. First, we uh, docking uh, needling to the uh, canvas triangle, then insert to the work channel by the uh, guide needle. But first, the guide needle docking to here point. It, then we can see the in CM image to here. Here, because it's the same situation like this. Then, in the uh, CM image, this point is a, a needle target point here. Can you see here? Yeah. He, uh, this uh, image, uh, image showing the suprapedicular notch here, you can see here. Here is a suprapedicular notch. Usually, L45 Above the L45 have a wide uh, foramen and suprapedicular notch, but uh, so many patients of uh, L45, uh, some narrow foramen and some small suprapedicular point area. Because anyway, well, if we hope to operate to the inferior art, uh, inferior migrate cases, it need uh, some exposure. This uh, pedic here pedicle here suprapedicular pros. Here is a superpedicular notch area here. Then some sometimes need uh, drilling to here, sometimes uh, can take out directly to here. Uh, this is intramna of the L5 son of the ligament. Uh, two uh, splitting the ligamentum problem to the shoulder. If it possible to uh, splitting very lateral part of the ligament problem, but if you hope to uh, enter to the axilla root. Uh, split ligament problem splitting is the uh, border near midline of the uh, ligament problem area. Uh, yes, in the uh, yes, this also very important. In the uh, how many doctors performing the intraminal approach for the L5 vessel? Usually transformer in India. Sir, uh, for transforaminal L5S1, you mean? Uh, L5S1 interlaminar. Interlaminar. I guess uh, when we started, I started after learning from you. Then probably that time, uh, very few, probably two, three. Currently, I believe uh, in our group only, there are three, four people who are performing it on a regular basis. Overall, India currently would be at least 100 people for sure. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, because of that, the uh, intramural approach is very useful to the L5 S1. But uh, there have a uh, two approach route. One is a shoulder, one is a axilla. But unfortunately, axilla approach is uh, not familiar in spite of the surgeon because of that uh, uh, 
Uh, firstly, they try the shoulder approach, but shoulder approach need uh, some traction of nerve root and uh, sometimes uh, like uh, some the pathology located to the axilla area, the uh, nerve retraction can retract the disc together because of that uh, laminar disc, uh, so many, some of patient need to uh, remain the laminar disc there. But axilla area is um, because of that uh, more useful to uh, can more not retreat to the uh, nerve root and more wide space exposure and retraction of the central and retraction of the uh, uh, medial all is uh, very easily can pass out. But uh, if you firstly uh, expose the epidural area, some limbal of the fat area, then uh, can ducking the actual area is possible. Yeah, and and the but a uh, beginner usually very uh, fear uh, to uh, limbar of the uh, fat, uh, fat tissue uh, around the nerve. But uh, don't worry. Uh, if you have uh, some, exp uh, some experience, that is very easy process. Then if you uh, try the axilla approach, if you can possibly axilla approach, you have a uh, can approach the all area of the L5 S1. Here, here is a uh, docking point of the L5S1. Uh, we are naming the this V point uh, because of the this is the most deepest point and more most close point of to the nerve root. You can see here the ducking like the, the, to here, and then insert the uh, bevel angle to here. Yeah. Then you, you can the directly uh, expose the ligament problem here. Ducking to here, then. Insert and rotate. Then rotate. Okay, then you can expose the ligament problem near directly. Because of that, the beginner of the for the big interamina uh, approach usually need some so many muscle resection and so many fat resection there because of they very difficult to expose the ligament problem. But if you directly contact to here, that's more easy and more easy to uh, uh, expose the ligament problem and splitting also can possible directly. And then we can perform the inter uh, ligament problem splitting and annular sealing, then make a structural preservation. Here is a ligament problem here, splitting the ligament problem, then tip of the bevel, insert to there, and then rotate. Then usually we can see approach to the axilla area. Then here is the axilla. then limb the pathology, and then rotate to the working channel, and then uh, retract to, uh, the lobe to the, to the cranial, to the medial. Then ceiling here. Then limb, uh, limb of the working channel to there. Yes. Uh, Mm, this is uh, if you have uh, some experience of the transfrontal uh, endoscopic spine surgery. I hope to some give us some uh, tips of the overcome the learning curve because of the, the so many my colleagues and my um, uh, students have uh, some uh, experience of the endoscopic transfrontal approach, but they not uh, overcome the learning curve. And I gave the some tips they uh, more easily learn curve, uh, overcome the learning curve. They have some tips. Uh, this is already well known that the uh, inside out and outside in. But I already mentioned that I'm using the mobile outside in. This is a first tip, first tip. Yes, I already mentioned that uh, 
the pivot point is the deep uh, tangent triangle here. Then if we uh, insert working channel to here, we can, then we can, yes, insert, then, yes. If we hope to move to the quarter, uh, inferior migrate cases, if we hope to move to the superior migration case, if we hope to move to the paratal case, all possible by same pathway. It's all possible by the mobile outside technique. Yeah. Here is the pivot point of the mobile outside in, in approach. Uh, first, we docking image like this. Uh, first, we can see the fat tissue area. If uh, first we insert to the working channel to the deep uh, canvas triangle, we can see this image. Fat and the for, uh, foramen ligament and uh, uh, lateral border of the uh, fa uh, facet joint. Then uh, clear to here, then you can see here, this uh, ship reticular process, this this clear area, this actual space area. Like this, ducking and uh, rotate the working together and the lessening the angle, increasing the angle, or it's possible like this. The, here is a pivot. See one more again. Move, lessening, rotate the working channel, rot, uh, rotate the angle to the inferior article first, uh, inferior migrate cases. Again, first ducking and the lessening, and rotate the working channel, and rotate the working channel again, counter, yes. This is mobile outside. And then we can see the lessening with the safety of the acting nerve root and visceral organ. You can see it. You can see this video by the Job Journal. This is my paper also. This we can see the 25 degree angle. That insert more deep, deep can be triangle. But always push the working channel by the, this hand. This first image. You can see the push uh, the working channel by this hand and moving the uh, score. Okay, see again, because this is very important. You're pushy. Pushy the uh, walking channel by the hand, uh, second, to second hand, foot. Then move the working channel by uh, for your target. Then, because of that, uh, this making half and half is very important. I already mentioned that, and also some another important uh, consideration of the overcoming the learning curve is that. Uh, Expose the epidural space, making the half and half. Because of the, the usually people, uh, insertion uh, angle of the working channel and usually 25 degree. If we 
you less angled approach in spite of the less angled approach, usually this uh, pathology user usually not uh, uh, target area because of that. Uh, if you are making the some half and half, you can. Uh, I always recommend, and I am always doing the cutting this lateral border and lateral blocking barrier of the annulus. Is the the barrier of the some. Uh, contained a lot uh, protruded or rupture disc uh, point here because I always cut here. There is another tip to overcome the learning, learning curve. And on another tip is that this you can see the working channel uh, endoscope located to the center, but unfortunately, this is not center. This is on initial point of the annulus. It means that the this position is uh, work, uh, is uh, uh, working channel located to here, not here. If we hope to uh, operate to the center, you should go more deeply, and uh, the scope, not working channel, scope should uh, uh, locate to the more than over the center. Uh, this is another good tips to overcome the learning curve. Yes, I'm uh, making the name of ducking and lever. Uh, yes, if you move uh, the working channel from here to here, some ducking the tip of the bevel of tip here and the rotate, then you can go to this area here. Imperial process. Um, yes, rotate here. Insert the bevel to the this bony structures. Again, bevel tip to the bony structures and then rotate. Then, yes, this for the imperial migrated suprapedicular root. This uh, foramen root, yes, always foramen uh, that working channel lo located to the intervertebral area. Then you hope to move to here. The tip of the bevel to the bony structures and rotate. Again. Bevel of the tip. Rotate. And ducking to here and ch uh, change the angle with and, and then insert to here yes but anyway uh, in the endoscopic spine surgery there have uh, so many complications can happen but the three complications is important first uh, complication is a dural tear but uh, usually transfer approach have no serious dural tear but sometimes uh, undetectable dural tear can make a so serious comp uh, pain and nerve damage to the patient. You sh now, but if you detectable dural tear is usually no problem because you can manage it there. In spite of this huge dural tear, uh, I'm only insert the patch to here. Yes, you can read the, the, this uh, this paper by the World Neurosurgery by me. Uh, I published this paper. Uh, here you can see the uh, lead uh, of this technique. See again, you can see huge drug here. But anyway, if you met, don't worry. If you insert the uh, patch to here, But should uh, making preventing the uh, uh, prolapse of the nerve, that is the most important point. You, uh, this patient, uh, this preoperative, this postoperative, and six months later, you can see. And also the patient have no serious pain after operation, in spite of the huge direction. But uh, the patient, uh, some bed rest, uh, two or three days, the patient can pass over to ambulation. 
And the, some another uh, serious complication happened by the segment throttling that I already mentioned that this uh, retrofilling, if you met uh, some uh, uh, fresh gusha from the uh, uh, operation field or skin uh, insertion uh, site, you should uh, insert again the uh, working channel, uh, should breathing control and should searching the segment arterial bleeding point, then cauterization uh, to there. That is very important. Yes, one another uh, point is that uh, infection. Actually, uh, uh, endoscopic disectomy infection is completely different to the uh, uh, open uh, uh, spinal surgery infection. In my experience, there's more, just more serious to the patients. And also, I also have uh, some uh, case of uh, three infection patient and one patient died due to the infection, this guy this. But uh, that's very, uh, 20 years ago. Anyway, uh, uh, I met that patient. I'm also searched what is the problem. And uh, then always recommend this catch the final of the tip and then insert by the nurse and or resistant to, resistant to it like this. Then maybe I have no um, infection by the endoscope after endoscope uh, move to Gangnam uh, Nanuri Hospital. I moved to here two years ago and I have no cases of infection. And during my uh, 15, 15 years of the spinal surgery, I met uh, four cases of uh, infection. Initial time, I met uh, three cases. And three years ago, I met uh, one case. But uh, during another time, I always uh, recommended this uh, pressure to my nurse. And always my nurse followed this, this technique and they have no infection. Because of that uh, long instrument to make a uh, uh, more high chance of the infection and contamination. Long instrument. Yes, finally, we uh, checking the clinical uh, series. Yes, this first case is a 73-year-old uh, female patient, L5S1, paratal disc cases. In, in the paratal disc cases, especially L5S1, uh, some ducking the walking channel to the deep cabin triangle, very severe pain to the patient because of that in the in this case in that uh, situation we can ducking the walking channel to here that here floating technique using the floating the first ducking to here then remove the firstly remove the disc then after remove the uh, rupture disc then insert uh, the walking channel to the more deeper point and searching some remain disc to there there is a the, if you insert the working channel direct to here, the patient is fairly, very, very severe pain. Maybe some patient have a shock by the pain. And this highly inferior migration cases. Yes, now there's so many techniques of uh, highly inferior migration cases, but I'm using this technique. Uh, uh, drilling, uh, expose the suprapedicular area and uh, some leaving and drilling the uh, pedicle area, partial uh, pedicleectomy. Then this case is uh, uh, directly, direct removal of a pathology, not uh, uh, past the discovery area. Then using the supra-pedicular compression open technique, you can read by, uh, this is my paper by Biomed Research International. Then the this pathology limit by completely. And also you we see that this patient very uh, highly inferior migration cases after operation. But anyway, if we using the trans uh transform route, there is a bridge in the area. And also if we use the uh, search the suprapedicular route, uh, that can possibly remove this pathology without uh, damage another structures. And also in high kernel compromise or cases also can possible. Uh, this patient, you can see a wide uh, 
foreign area because of that uh, this patient uh, approach to here is not difficult but if the patient have a, a narrow foreign area and hypertrophic uh, uh, this area you should drill this area then can possible uh, expose the abdominal area uh, if you in this like this cases uh, firstly uh, ducking to here and making half and half and insert to the bevel rf to here and push down push down then you can uh, uh, cut here then possible cut here then uh, another uh, central point can take out there if you not kept, uh, cutting here usually uh, this center is can uh, uh, take out is very difficult and this case is showing the l1 2 uh, foramen to super migration cases but uh, l1 to have a very uh, close to the midline area uh, uh, skin initial point is very close because of that we always making the very steep angle but uh, l1 to have a more wide very wide foramen area and also we have a, some drill can possible to drilling here then move to the uh, like uh, some uh, i already mentioned technique some uh ducking the bevel tip and rotate to uh, overriding using the overriding technique we can operate to the this uh frame and from the uh, to actual area can possible in spite of the steep uh, approach angle And also, uh, I already mentioned that uh, transfer from transfer approach is a real uh, less neural attractive approach because of that, uh, like this pending neurology patient have a more advantage compared to the open surgery. This uh, this patient come to, come to with a completely foot drop state. One month later. Six months later, the patient motor recovered completely. Motor recovered completely now. This is case also very interesting case. This case published in World Nurse by me. This intradural ruptured disc cases. Uh, the patient also came with me very, very severe pain, but stem pain. And uh, uh, you can see here the intradural uh, disc in, uh, tear. And the transformally can pass. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I met this patient. Uh, I believe that this face, I don't know, for, before the operation, this is not intradiscal, but uh, during operation, I catch that this is intradiscal. Anyway, uh, I met that the uh, limb with this discal tear, then limb with this pathology and insert the uh, taco seal here and patch to here. And then uh, after operation, one, one year later, the, uh, the patient ambulate two, three days later, and uh, one week later, the patient have no pain. And the six, uh, yes, one week later, and this six months later, the patient recovered completely. This is my first case of the interdural of the case by the transformer approach. And also this case uh, is a l 5 sm paratrial para this case is also uh, transfer uh, from approach is very difficult because this patient high older and highly aggressive. If you hope to approach to here, firstly drilling here, then uh, making the more wide space to the safety area, then uh, ducking to here, then move to the retraction of the nerve by the uh, working channel like this. Then safely retraction is possible there.
Then post-operative, you can see the disclaimer here. This uh, next case is intraminal cases. In the uh, l 5 and highly inferior myelic cases, uh, you, in the, like these cases, in axial layer is more easy and the, uh, making the angle to the target point like this is more easy to export to here. But some of patient uh, not eat, uh, remain uh, limbal path pathology by the full service not easy. In that case, uh, drill, some part of the low lamina drill can make a more, uh, export a more wider space. Like this, and this uh, L5 person uh, superior migration cases making the angle like this, and uh, some drilling over here. But uh, then you can export uh, approach to like this angle. Then maybe this can then can pass over. And uh, this case is, uh, is the. L5 S and foramenal to superior migration cases. And actually this L5 S and foramenal uh, to superior migration cases, most difficult cases of the endoscope spines are dissecting because this transform, like this patient uh, have a transforaminal approach is not each. If she is trying terminal is not each. Because of, of that, in that cases, we can apply the uh, contralateral intraminal cases. Actually, this case is the first case of the contralateral intraminal case uh, in the world. Uh, I published the paper in James maybe several years. Nowadays, uh, so many doctors uh, uh, using the contralateral intraminal approach. And then, post operative, you can see the discalimbral subject. Uh, sufficiently, you can see the image video here. This contralateral facet, splitting the ligament problem here. Then insert the working channel to there. Then possible removal of the rupture disc here. Then also we can check the contractor. Uh, the root here. This is a revision cases. Revision case uh, surgery can technique can uh, take a, a Chiang Gims uh, paper. Firstly, ducking to the bony structure so rather than the intraminal uh, ligament problem. Then splitting the uh, adhesion tissue by the uh, radio frequency by the probe. Then possible to operate to uh, to uh, then make a, uh, a safety retraction to the target point. And then there were all this pathology. Firstly, ducking to the bony structures is very important. Then post-operative image. And now the thoracic uh, disc also can pass over transfrontally. Ah, so long time. <laughs> yes, um, uh, I I'm already, I I experienced. I'm starting endoscopic spinal surgery 2003, and uh, still I'm always feeling in the, my operation like this situation. Dear. Uh, I'm working on the uh, uh, iceberg, and uh, and this sometimes feel the some danger, and I always hope to take care of my patient to safety, and uh, to hope to uh, give the more good clinical result to the patient. But always uh, some worry uh, the 